All right, everybody, this is Mike Guillory again coming at you from sneakerhistory.com. And today we're back in Houston, Texas at the Sneaker Summit. And I have my special guest here. Brian Angel, also known as Kadoma713 <laughs> from back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, man, it's good to meet you. Good to sit with you today. You're in one of the staples of Houston, the staples of sneaker culture. And we just wanted to, you know, come by and let people kind of you know, pick your brain a little bit, see how okay, you, you know, okay. how you're working, mm -hmm. how the store's going, how's the event's going, like, mm -hmm. stuff like that, man, so. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Well, thanks for stopping by, man. Appreciate you guys thinking of me. <laughs> uh, hopefully, I have something to share and contribute that's going to add <laughs> to everybody's celebration of sneaker culture. Yeah, man. Hey, yeah. You, you've already done so, so we appreciate your time. And, I mean, first thing I want to know is, like, you've been doing this since, what, 2000. Uh, man, I got big into sneakers again. I'll say again. again. It's been like a running thing throughout my life. Yeah. But uh, this this thing that I'm on now probably started in like the early 2000s. Okay. Uh, Sneaker Summit itself started in 2004, January of 2004 to be exact. That's when we've had our first community gathering mm -hmm. in a coffee shop, uh, kind of arcade. Um, I don't know what they call them now, uh, internet cafes. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so nice. uh, we had a bunch of guys that were on a message board before there was really even social media. So like Nike Talk days uh, or Nike before that? Nike Talk days, okay. yeah, it was Nike Talk. So, uh, you know, I was into music at the time. I remember mm -hmm. one of my friends, we were chatting and uh, um, I mentioned to him, I wish I could find a pair of shoes <laughs> that I had back in the day. I think they were Bo Jackson trainers. Ooh, okay. He's like, well, have you ever been on Nike Talk? And I was like, no, you know, oh, I no. haven't. So he directed me to that side. I saw it, saw the forum, saw people on there from all over the world, Australia, Japan. Oh, yeah. And that's when I kind of realized, like, this was becoming a worldwide phenomenon. Mm -hmm. It really just wasn't a interest or even a hobby anymore yeah. it was quickly becoming a worldwide phenomenon and on those little message boards they had a southwest section mm -hmm. and then we started a houston thread and uh you know we had a bunch of people we would just chat and banter every day <laughs> yeah. and then finally somebody got the idea like hey you know we always talk every day we ought to meet up and meet yeah. one another see what each other look like so uh I was kind of one of the guys that I say took the bull by the horns and made it happen. Yeah. Uh, you know, because people like to talk about it, mm -hmm. not be about it. That's true. And um, I still remember that day when I got out of the car at the coffee shop. Yeah. I heard a kid say, "Look at that old guy wearing Jordans." Oh. <laughs> and that was uh, that was 16 years ago. <laughs> yeah. So. You know, it kind of dawned on me back then, like it was a successful event, mm -hmm. and if I wanted it to happen again, I was going to be one of the people that would be responsible for that. Yeah. So I told them, you know, when you get out of school for the summer, when you guys come home from college, let's do it again in the summertime. And, nice. You know, it, we've been doing it biannually now for 16 full years. This will be our 17th year, I believe. I believe yeah and uh, you know in the beginning it just doubled in size with every event like they go tell a friend or a cousin or oh, a yeah. neighbor and we went from sports bar um, I'm sorry coffee shops to sports bars to nightclubs to concert venues <laughs> Um, in 2011, I believe you said that's your first sneaker summit behind yeah. the camera there. We were the first ever event of our kind to be hosted in a professional sports venue, mm -hmm. the Toyota Center, home of the Houston Rockets. Um, we outgrew that in just a year. We moved to NRG Center. And I would say at the peak of our ex existence, we were probably in an 80,000 square foot exhibit hall Man. with... Uh, I want to say 8,000 people. Yeah. That's a good show. And those are, those are hard numbers. There's a lot of fluff out there, you know, on, on some of these um, shows. But, yeah, it was massive, massive. Um, but, you know, the fashion's cyclical, mm -hmm. and yeah. I'm not ashamed to say that. Um, there's ups and downs of sneaker culture uh -huh. when... You know, reselling's through the roof, and everybody's a everybody <laughs> oh, yeah. wants to get a piece, and then 
there's the lows where the market just bottoms yeah. out on a lot of stuff and that's when you find out you know um who the hardcore sneaker heads yeah, are, yeah. you know who's in it for the love and the culture and everything not the flip <laughs> uh, yeah not the flip <laughs> you know they'll be on to the next but you know i welcome everybody we're all part of the part of the same game yeah, huh? um but basically that's it in a nutshell and here we are uh 17 years later we opened the store three years ago okay. to provide our audience a place to celebrate sneaker culture uh 360 days a year instead of two days <laughs> a year you know so a lot of times i look out there and it looks like a little mini sneaker summit kids walking around <laughs> the store like, hey, with their boxes you know <laughs> hey how much you give for these so it's kind of like a microcosm of the whole event which is cool and um I've seen the event transcend generations. I see guys that came to my first show as a teenager, mm -hmm. and now they're coming here with their kids, teaching yeah. them how to resell shoes and, you know, make money off of the hobby. Or when you're done wearing them, you know, you can sell them mm -hmm. and get you a new pair. Uh, that's probably one of the biggest uh, accomplishments of our event. Another, you know, favorite compliment is the wide percentage of our female audience mm -hmm. it's more like 30 70 to 60 40 okay and uh tasha one of our managers here she even started sneak her summit like a group oh, just cool. for females and they do you know their sneaker ball and then they have kicks and kicky mats where they like it's like a paint and sit but they paint sneaker doormats instead oh, nice. okay. you know little doormats yeah. sneaker themed doormats and um they have one more event in there. I don't. I don't know, but they're they're doing good, man. They're doing good. Like when we took that family photo of this summer's event, mm -hmm. like it was almost fifty fifty male female, and that, that's something that I like to see. That's something that's I'm proud of. That's a lot, man. Yeah. I mean, sneaker culture for females has been growing at least for. Yeah. For, for, I mean, forever it's been growing, but now we're really seeing like a a big like surge and like females are interested in in the culture. And I mean, it's awesome that you have, like you say, you can split down your your family photo. Yeah. And there's 50 percent women yeah. there who are part of the game, and yeah. it's awesome, man. And doing big things too, not just hanging out looking cool. Yeah, like they're making moves and and doing their own thing. So, um, yeah. you know, I'm very proud of that fact. Good, man. Well, I mean, one of the things you've done is like I've, I've noticed is like the what complex 50 most like influential things in the sneaker culture. Yeah, I think yeah. we are on the. Uh, 50 things that change sneaker culture yeah, forever. Exactly. So we were right up there with Run DMC getting their Adidas deal, uh, Michael Jordan getting mm -hmm. his signature shoe, uh, Kanye West. Like, um, you know, it's just, it was amazing to be on that list. And we were pretty high on that list, too. <laughs> yeah, we were, if, we, if that's the one you're talking about. Yeah, that's about, exactly the one I'm talking okay, about. Yeah. I also have a personal accomplishment. <laughs> here too, but, you know, the one, the, the event I'm, I'm more proud of, you know, because yeah. that's something we accomplished collectively mm -hmm. as a community. Um, you know, I always tell my employees a little behind the scenes here, but I tell them, you know, Sneaker Summit's not about me. Mm -hmm. It's not about you. It's about the community that we serve, mm -hmm. you know, first and foremost. So, Whenever I make my business decisions, you know, I take into consideration our community first and then, you know, my, myself, my employees, like, you know, it's always about them because they're going to hopefully outlast my long, <laughs> my trajectory in sneaker Yeah, culture, just keep know? it going, just keep it yeah. rolling. Yeah. That's awesome. So what? I mean, I know we talked about how you got back into sneakers. You're looking for that old Bo mm -hmm. Jackson fair. What got you into sneakers originally? Oh, well, I, I mean, sneakers have been a big deal to me ever since I can remember. And, you know, I won't say back in the sneakers. That's just like the the trip that I'm on right now yeah. with Sneaker Summit. But, um, you know, thinking as far back as I can, like growing up elementary school, my favorite color was green. Mm -hmm. Uh, I wanted, I dreamt for a green pair of sneakers, <laughs> you know, back then they didn't have much choice. It was either white or black, <laughs> you know, of course mom wants the black, you can be able to tell, but I still remember the day I walked in the front door of the mall mm -hmm. and there they were like a light at the end of the <laughs> tunnel, a pair of green sneakers and I had to have them. I wasn't leaving that store without them. They were called zips. 
which I don't know, maybe some of the audience sneaker history knows what those are. I don't even know, but they were like uh, knockoff kangaroos or something. Oh, you know okay. what kangaroos, know kangaroos are with yeah, the yeah, little yeah. pocket, but I guess zips were the first shoe with Velcro or something. Oh, shoot. Okay. I, didn't, I didn't care about the brand. The they color. were, they like, were green, the yeah. and I was sold on them. So, you know, my mom asked the sales associate, do you have these in his size? Of course they didn't, oh. but they had a size or two too big. But you know what? I'm going to grow into them. Mama <laughs> sold on it because I was going to grow into them. <laughs> And I wore them. I can remember wearing them, and I loved wearing them. And they were flopping off the back of my foot, and they gave me like the worst blister on my heel. But I didn't, didn't care because I was going. fresh. Yeah, that's was awesome, fresh. man. So yeah, that's that's the first memory. And then second memory was sports. Mm -hmm. You know, into I was real into uh, baseball, soccer. You know. I know the boots are kind of like a big deal yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. You always want to have a fresh pair of those. Um, and then skateboarding. Yep. And, you know, skateboarding was a life of its own in the sneakers. Like, you know, Vans is a huge brand favorite of mine. They are probably the most storied brand in all of sneaker culture. Uh, yeah. What that family did growing up on, as a beach uh, front shoe store and offering the first custom sneakers and then catching on uh, custom boat boat shoe sneaker catching <laughs> on with skateboarders surfers uh, snowboarders mm -hmm. then you have the whole Vans warp tour phenomenon yep. it's just crazy how they kind of took over the world but you know always wanted a fresh pair of skate shoes uh, back then, depending on who you were, they didn't look too fresh. But the skaters, they were fresh, <laughs> you know. But um, I mean, you'd beat the hell out of those things, mm -hmm. and then you'd need something other than your skate shoes to yeah. look fresh in. So I always had a pair of shoes to skate in, growing up to beat up, and then I had a pair of Nikes to go out to the Walk clubs. Around, yeah. And girls actually knew what those were, you know. They they're like Duffs. What are those? Are those Payless? Like. You know, but you wouldn't no, understand. But, yeah, you wouldn't, you wouldn't understand. understand. <laughs> Those are Big Brother shoes. Those are jackass shoes, you know? But, yeah, so a lot of people didn't know the backstory of skateboarding back then. Yeah. You didn't know unless you were in the culture. I guess I would liken it to, uh, you know, some of these, like, fashionista brands we have now, yeah. like Buscemi or Real John niche, Geiger. Right? Yeah. yeah, you have to be in the culture yeah. to really know who those yeah, guys yeah, are exactly. and it's not just like a fresh designer shoe you yeah know, so. you have to know exactly yeah. what they are. you have to know what you're yeah. looking for at that point yeah real niche brand yeah so. shoot and were you ever one of the people who would buy the you know jordan ones on sale skateboard in or were you um like i saw people skating in them um i was a big bones brigade fan okay. a lot of those guys yeah. skated airwalks i was a big airwalk Air guy yeah i don't know if you remember airwalk but they were huge man they had i had a pair they, of airwalks when i was a yeah. kid actually. <laughs> they were big and bulky and had the ollie guards mm -hmm. they had the dope mascot the little ollie guy yeah. which was kind of like a jump man <laughs> it's the skateboarding world though. yeah so i loved airwalks back then and then uh i think growing into high school um, I fell in love with Vans. I did my first custom order by mail order Ooh. at a Shannon Skate and Surf or something. And I had to mail it in and I got purple corduroy with a black outsole and it took weeks. I was going to ask you, was it like old Nike ID? In. Like, yeah, hey, six to eight weeks, we'll catch you up. <laughs> it was definitely pigeon mail. It was, like, <laughs> it was bad, like snail mail. But when you got them, it was uh, like a yeah. trophy in the mail. It was like, like a trophy. It. Like I was the only one in school with purple corduroy vans with brass eyelets and the black outsole everybody had white outsoles yeah. and a black like, upper what's this like what's going you on know? here yeah yeah i was definitely unique standing out so that's awesome yeah. it's always been a reoccurring theme throughout my life shoes so. yeah um i'm glad that i could find a career in it yeah it wasn't my choice of career <laughs> path um i was an electrical designer uh, I went to school um, for AutoCAD or computer aided drafting. Oh, okay. okay. It's a software program. So, looking back on things, I probably should have been a graphic designer. Like, I was always a creative. I got uh, awards for art in school. Mm -hmm. And I love video games, I love computers. 
a new like if I could ever work with both of them oh, man. I'd be you know in heaven <laughs> so the only thing they had in, at my high school at the time was that AutoCAD program yeah, yeah, yeah. where you could draft and draw buildings so uh, I learned how to do that proficiently I got a summer job at an engineering firm where they were still drafting on boards I was like the only person there that could use the, the computer when they <laughs> needed it and then um, I guess it just it blew up in that industry and they're like hey we need you to do this full time like run our computer area drafting department so I dropped out of school I did that for years yeah. you know and then lost my job in the recession uh. work started running out mm -hmm. um, you know Houston stayed afloat in the recession for a long time we have the oil and gas here yeah. which is really never gonna die as long as we're <laughs> dependent on that um, and then we also have a huge medical center here yeah. but we slowly ran out of work as years uh, went on and uh, they furloughed me which means you can work from home mm -hmm. and work started running out so it got to the point where I don't think I can live off of this anymore yeah. So that dream of working in sneakers became a reality, yeah. not by choice. I always dreamed of retiring and working in sneakers one day, but um, I was just kind of thrown into the fire like, hey, you know, this is what I got, so I might <laughs> as well do something with it. Well, good thing you like sneakers then, because yeah. like, you know what, if I have to do it, I might as well enjoy yeah. it every day. Oh man, I, I hustle, I still yeah. hustle. Like, right. You know, I just make an effort each and every day to work as hard as I can as long as I can you know my main I say our uh, mission statement here is to grow sneaker culture by giving back to it so that's what we try to do each and every day uh, push the culture in the right direction push it forward yeah. steer it in the right direction you know we talked a little bit before about you know culture vultures kind of get their hands <laughs> in things yeah. it can get real whack real quick so um, <laughs> You know, but not that I'm like the savior of sneakers or anything, but just, you know, trying to make sure that it stays true because it's that thing that we all love, yeah. you know, and um, that's what I wake up and try to do each and every day. That's so cool, that's my man. goal. Well, heck, man, there's more, there's even more people like you trying to keep yeah. it pure, keep it, you know, what it is. It's, yeah. it's art. People love to like ingest or take in art. So. Yeah. It's super cool, man. I mean, that's exactly how I view it. I always tell people I'm an artist. There you go. And that event is my art. You know, I work for months and months at a time on that one event. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what may set us apart from, from other events or shows. And then when it happens, it's that art piece. It's that display or that mm -hmm. opening. And it's over in an instant. Yeah. Like, to me... You know, because I work tires, tirelessly for months, and then in five hours, it's just like it's a like, poof it's gone of smoke. Now? Like, what happened? And, and then after the event, we all go out to dinner as a team, and we'll be like, did that really just happen? <laughs> like, did Slim Thug just get on stage and perform? Or nice. did Chase B just show up? Like, <laughs> And, you know, Travis had his soda machine there. Oh. Like, what was going on? Like, he unveiled his soda machine at the thing. Oh, song. man. I, man, it's just crazy, crazy stories for years, Yeah, you know, and I love each event individually, mm -hmm. like they're my children, <laughs> they each have their own personality, mm -hmm. like, you know, uh, Bobito was there, or Clark Kent was there, mm -hmm. or, you know, we have different people come to each one, and some people come to every one, yeah. um, I remember the first celebrity that came to our event, uh, Rafer Austin yeah. skipped to my Lou Man. playground legend. That's when he was with the Rockets, still, yeah, right? He came yeah. to our event when he was with the Rockets, and we were in a sports bar. So he just pulled up on us, you know. And then I think Bun B was a close second. Uh, we've been friends for 10 years now. Oh, that's awesome. You know, just because we love sneakers. Mm -hmm. And that's what makes Sneaker Summit such a special place, is like. A kid with a closet full of sneakers can come there and be on the le on the same level as somebody like Bon, a Grammy nominated artist, yeah. and they're just sitting there kicking it, talking about sneakers. On the common you know? ground. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's so cool. I know. I'm sure you know our resident sneaker king, PJ Tucker. I'm sure he's. Uh -huh. Creeping around these, oh, yeah. these streets, he comes trying to get me all the time. <laughs> he's trying to get me to come off the, uh, a few of the Kobe's that I have. 
um, in my collection. Yeah, you know, I have the eighty-one point Kobe's. The, only, the original? The only, yeah, the original. Only eighty-one pairs in Kobe size. He really wants to wear those in a game. Uh, and then I got like one of four that they released at the conversation for Kobe. Oh, uh, man. The debut of the Zoom Kobe one. So. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's like one of four. <sighs> and there may be one more in my collection that's pretty rare. But, <laughs> but yeah, Shoot. he really wants the ball in those shoes. I saw him whip out the Cheetah Yeezys, though. Yeah, that I saw that yesterday. I was like, bro. where did you go? It was like, like four pairs of those in the yeah, world? Yeah, like, I'm, I don't know if I've ever seen those in my life. If no. I have, like... It just went went in and out, but, you know. Shoot, well, I mean, you work with sneakers all the time. Mm-hmm. Clearly, you have some super rare items, some super, some gems out there. Uh-huh. Is there anything you haven't got your hands on, some some grails you're still looking for? Well, let me let me tell you this. I'm going to be uh, honest here. Um, I would no longer consider myself a collector. Okay. Um, I was a collector that became a hoarder. <laughs> And, you know, when, when Sneaker Summit first started, I was a serious collector. Yeah. Like, you know, people would tell me, you're serious business, man. Like, yeah. I was serious about my <laughs> shit. But then Sneaker Summit took off. Like I told you, it was doubling in mm-hmm. size. It was booming. And, uh, you know, that collection instantly became me hoarding <laughs> stuff. Because I would work my day job, and then at night I'd go home and work on Sneaker Summit. Uh-huh. But I never wanted to miss out on a pair. Oh. Back then, it was like Pokemon. You could almost catch them all. You know, you had, like, the Air Forces the first sa- Saturday every month. You had the Jordans. You really only had the home and away. Yeah. And then maybe an all-star color yeah, mixed in there. Yeah, it was of them every weekend. Yeah. Like, I can't exactly. catch all of them. <laughs> exactly. So I was amassing shoes, but... <laughs> I wasn't having the time to give them attention or care or yeah. anymore and it got to the point where I had sneakers in every room of my house. I'm t- every room. It's like trying bathroom, to walk around the <laughs> dining room, the kitchen, the bedroom, the closet. Like it was bad. It was bad. There's a few people that, you know, saw how I used to live and I had a problem. I mean, I really had a problem. A lot of people say they have a problem. No, no, dude, no you're, yeah. you're organized. <laughs> like you could move that shit without a team of people if you if you had to. There was no like I needed a, a what do you call that? Uh, I don't know. I needed help. <laughs> like seriously. Intervention, like, like yes, please, I needed an intervention. <laughs> like Brian, this has gone on long enough. Like we're gonna help you quit. So. It all came together when I uh, thought, you know, of the idea to open the storefront. Oh, okay. So, basically, we opened the storefront with my collection. Oh, wow. um, You know, on one wall. And then now we have people. We have, like, thousands of consigners in here now. Wow, good deal. So, after three years, it's been doing very good. And I will say, um, I probably did that at the right time. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, the things that I do have left, they're falling apart, they're crumbling. Yeah. They really have nothing left but that sentimental value. Yeah. You know, and then we've seen the emergence of StockX and GOAT, Mm -hmm. which has made the value of some things plummet. uh, And other things go up. Yeah. But, you know, so um, I turned my collection, looking back in hindsight... I turned it into something for everyone because it helped me open this place, uh, get the ball rolling. And now, like, I'm still on the hunt for pairs, but just, like, what I'll wear. Yeah. You know? Um, What gets me interested at the moment is, like, new technologies. Okay. Um, Really enjoyed that boost run. Yeah. Uh, Had to try, you know, Nike's Nike Epic React and Mm -hmm. see how they worked. Um... I guess I'm I'm still kind of big into Yeezys right now. Yeah, really you get the like, wearables on right yeah, now, man. I like the V2s a whole lot. Uh, just got my hands on a pair of Wave Runners with a restock. Yeah, I won't overpay for shoes anymore, just so I, I can st- just so I can stunt. I rather use that money, you know, for the storefront or for yeah. the event, turn it into something for everyone. That's so awesome. it's not, yeah, it's kind of like what I said, it's not about me anymore. It's about everyone else. So 
trying to pass that down um, or around and make sure you know it's something everybody can participate in yeah. something everybody can enjoy so um, yeah that's basically what I got going on right now Shoot, uh, but about in the collection like a couple of things that I won't let go of yeah that the zoom Kobe ones uh, okay. they're autographed by him I think I may have a couple autographed by him. I'm not exactly oh, sure. Oh, man. <laughs> and then I also have uh, Shaquille O'Neal's Reebok shoe out oh, there. Oh, I saw that one. Yeah, I saw it in the storefront. Uh, and I think that's autographed by him, too. So he wears the same size as the Kimbe Matumbo. Dude, you can uh, have a small family in that shoe. Yeah, you it's can. You can. But see, Shaq's proportionate. When he's running, yeah. he looks normal. When the Kimbe's running, he's kind of got to kick those <laughs> parking <laughs> lot blocks out, out of front of him. You know, like... Yeah, so I don't know. Those are a couple of things that have been hard for me to let go of. Um, the Kanye West Bape stuff. I was going to ask you yeah. about that. when I, I, The first time I ever saw one in person was today. Mm -hmm. That was that really was hard for me to let go of. I let my personal pair go to Travis Scott. <sighs> so when he came to visit to. the shop for the first time, it was the night of, uh, I think, the Yeezus concert. Um was that his latest tour no, with the Life floating stage? Okay, Life of Pablo. It was that tour, and he wanted to get Kanye to sign him. So I was like, it's funny. I went yeah. to that concert. He was actually like skateboarding in yeah. the, the pit before the concert started. So he must have yeah. made a stop here first. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, bro, I'm never going to see those shoes again. Size 11 and one of the rarest bapestas on earth. Like it's Such a yeah. nicely like yeah. executed yeah. coat with the bear on the back. It's so yeah. clean. Yeah. Shoot, man. Well, Hey, Ryan, this is an amazing story. You have an amazing story. Thank you. It, man, you have anything else well, going I got, on? Well, I got stories for days, for years, man. Anything else going on? I mean, I just like to travel. I like to go to different cities. I like to see sneaker culture yeah. there. Um, we've done All-Star Sneaker Summit for the past seven years. We've been, I, I think I told you off camera, we just went to Charlotte. Mm -hmm. We did New Orleans, New York. We're going to do Chicago next year. Uh, we did Los Angeles. Um, I love seeing what sneaker culture is about in different cities, what it means to different people. Everybody's got their different take on it. Um, I loved going to, you know, see where Jordan played. Yeah. That's, a, that's the biggest stadium in uh, all of basketball, man. <laughs> see like almost 20,000 people squeezing there each and every night wearing Jordans. Just to like see that just, man play. You can still feel the magic in the building, man. <laughs> I don't care what anybody <laughs> says. Like, just amazing. And um, I like to shop in uh, Los Angeles personally oh, yeah. and Tokyo. Um, those are my favorite places to go right now. Um, other than that, man, I'm just enjoying every bit of it, you know? Yeah. I enjoy mentoring my team, my employees. Uh, and that's what I really get a that's kick it. out of right now. Plan on opening any more stores, or you just do like this um, one here? I mean, this is always going to be our headquarters. Um, we may have a plan to expand in the future. We have some really bright people working here, um, so you never know, man. I mean, we're always looking to grow. Good. Always looking. It's just got to, you know, make sense that bottom line. Always, so, yeah. Got to make yeah. sense before you do it. Yeah. Well, Brian. I appreciate hey, it, my man. Thank you guys for coming by, hey. man. I appreciate you guys. Thank you, thank you. Hey, everybody in sneaker history, give sneakers someone to follow. You're out in Houston, you're out visiting. Come check them out. These guys are legit.